All right, guys, welcome back to the World Championship Series European Premier League season number three. As we have our second series on the way, it's going to be between Baby Knight and Crass. Uh, and this is going to be a good one because I personally feel that there's a real, real clash of styles here between these two players. Yeah, well, go ahead and uh, tell me what you think then about these two. Well, okay. Uh, I, I've cast Crass quite a bit in, uh, in uh, German scene uh, when he's been playing in EPS, Germany Nationals. That was quite a while ago, but in other things. Uh, and Crass is the kind of guy that is going to scout out his opponent very, very thoroughly. Um, depending on maps and things like that, uh, he may go against the norm against his opponent but likewise baby knight can also do a very very similar thing uh time uh, sometimes we've seen him going for like one base blink plays against terrans not as commonly as he would go for the standard you know nexus into robo into normally two gateways depending on what he scouts before the forge and then tying up the forge with the uh, twilight council after that um, but aside from that, they, you know, depending on the maps, uh, there could be there could be some crazy stuff. All right. Well, uh, the first map that we are going over to then is Aklon Wastes, which is a, a, a map that's very common. We've used it and playing on it a lot, the players and ourselves. So I don't think we'll see anything too crazy. You know, Crass is back into the uh, World Championship Series Premier mm -hmm. League. He played in Season One, but unfortunately didn't make it out of the group stage and didn't even make it into Season Two Premier League. So I think he's going to approach this as, yeah, I'm probably the underdog of this group, but I'm sure he'll give it his best, especially game number one, because just going out and doing something crazy in game number one when you're fresh back in, I think it's a little bit careless. Yeah. I would say so as well. I think that reaffirms the position that Crass is in as well, though. Uh, but let's get introducing these players as we have spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner our Red Protoss, now representing Millennium as well as Denmark. He is Baby Knight. And then up to the top left, our Blue Terran, representing NRS as well as Germany. We have Crass. But... I actually, I spoke to Crass a little briefly before the series, uh, before the before today's games, and uh, you know, he, he also said, you know, he feels the underdog, um, and he didn't have a lot of confidence in his mm. TVP up until this weekend at DreamHack Bucharest. Interestingly enough, he, he did lose against Todd, but it still filled him with a little bit more motivation, a little bit more confidence moving into this group. So maybe, you know, maybe we could see something uh, sh outshine here for Crass. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so, because Baby Knight is a very strong individual and is now playing for Team Millennium. He's, there's a lot of people that want him to do well, let's just say that. So a lot of fans, and he's been increasing those fans over the last couple of years with his performances in last year's World Championship Series, this year's World Championship Series, and all the other tournaments that he's attended. Hopefully he could play well here and get those uh, results to back up all the, excuse me, all the support that he has. And, uh, well, Crass here opening up with that gas. So looking to just fuel uh, maybe the Reaper here for him to try and head off across the map, which wouldn't be too bad to keep an eye on what Baby Knight's up to because, again, these guys know they're up each other's styles. Uh, so they know what they need to spot and see what's going on. And, again, in the past, this has been one of those maps where Baby Knight does like that one base blink play. But in the opening game of a series like this, I have to agree with what you said, that, you know, it's a bit crazy to go... Uh, for something yeah, a little bit insane in the first game. Yeah, I mean, especially if you tell me that, uh, you know, Crass has got a lot of confidence after this weekend. With a lot of confidence, the, 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 the last thing you do is try to just end the game as soon as you can. So I expect him to, to try to pull out one of the, one of the longer games he, uh, he can. But with Baby Knight, you know, likewise against Terran players, um, he's beaten Lucifron time after time in, the, in recent history, in the yeah. last couple of weeks or so, last month or two. So I'm expecting him to play a good game because when it comes to his games against Terran in the last six weeks, really, really solid. That's that's true. He's he's done really really well against uh, Terrans as of late, uh, and you know I mean that kind of has been uh, reaffirmed uh, with his recent results. Uh, not over the entirety of WCS system as he's currently sitting at something like you know four wins and four losses uh, against Terrans. So kind of sitting on the on the sidelines in that regard. But Crass, 
He's a bit more of an easier opponent in comparison to some of the Terrans that we've seen. Oh, despite Crass being one of the guys that takes a lot of influence from the Korean Terrans, loves multi-pronged attacks, like double drops whilst also poking at the front. That's something that Crass really excels at. Well, let's see if you can do that, because that's kind of the level he needs to bring today. He's yeah. a Korean level, so <laughs> if you think he practices it a lot and takes on that style, that's what he needs to do, but that is not a good start now, losing no. the Reaper. The Reaper here is absolutely to get the scout if that's a robotics facility right behind it. Uh, Baby Knight actually, upon killing the Reaper, decides to chrono boost into a second Stalker. Uh, with the Mothership Core going across the map, he, he was looking for an easy win. If there hadn't been a bunker been built, he just moves across and just gets damage done. Yeah. He may even be able to get a little bit of damage done because the bunker isn't ready. Um, it should still finish up and it shouldn't take too much loss, but... Baby Knight looking for that option. Yeah, he has to be a little bit careful. That SCV is also quite weak, so if he yeah, realizes look. that, so he might actually go for it because it was at half health. And now uh, with the Mothership Core coming, a second Stalker across the map, he did lose a lot of health on that first Stalker, mm. so maybe it wasn't quite worth it, but... Brings yeah, it probably wasn't SCV. worth it, actually. And so it's a tough one, and uh, we'll now have to fall back here with that. The Robo Facility goes down for him as well here uh, against Crass. Uh, but this might prompt, you know, Baby Knight here to mm. go for... Wait, has he got a sentry? No, well, he he's, got, he's got the Robo straight away, yeah. and, I, and I really think he's going to just play a very reactionary game. He's even sending the Mothership Core to Scout here. He wants to know what the follow-up from the Reaper Expand is. There's two different ways. It's Factory or for its extra barracks. And right now he pokes in, and he even slows down the Starport production a little <laughs> bit upon getting the scouting that it's there. So he definitely knows that he will have to now probably just throw cannons down into the mineral line. Um, because he's expecting this. He's yeah. expecting some kind of drop to come his way. Yeah, he knows something's going to be coming along. Uh, and I was going to say before, you know, prompt him to go for Forge before two gateways. Uh, I've seen a lot of games recently where Baby Knight likes to play a bit more defensively against a p an opponent that he's in the dark against and go for the two gateways before the Forge. Uh, but uh, again, the slight advantages he had with his uh, scouting, etc., did allow him to go for this. And Baby Knight is going to feel very, very comfortable in regards to what he's already seen as well as his setup back at home. Yeah, he's uh, in, in, good, in a good position here. But of course, it's never 100% never good until the drop has finally been pushed away, which mm. is what we're going to see now. Just two, two uh, Widow Mines, that's all it is <laughs> at this point. No cannons been opted to be built yet from here from Baby Knight, so he's going to have to build more than one Observer uh, to make sure that he doesn't allow these Widow Mines from what he's probably expecting to enter his uh, mineral line. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny watching the adaptation of Crass from uh, you know a few, uh, uh, a few months ago to now because he absolutely swore by Hellion Drops. He would do nothing but Hellion Drop, hell, hell, sorry, Hellbat Drop, mm. and nothing but Hellbat Drop, uh, but now it seems as if he's going to try and go for the Widow Mine route, and this can do a lot of damage if uh, Baby Baby Knight lets it slip. Where is his observers? Well, there's one on the natural and there's one on the other side of the map. And currently he has no detection inside his main base. The Mothership Core is there. But here comes the Widow Mines. Planted. No problem. Hmm. So this is going to... He's very slow with his reactions oh. here. Well, that's just not good for him. That's, no. That's a very bad start. He sees the Hellions in the middle of the map as well. So I think that is probably his focus point. But he's already lost six workers inside the main base. And a sentry now as well. And brings the medevac here to try and maybe micro these Hellions or just try and get them out of there once he tr gets some of these kills. And he's already got up to 11 kills. Uh, and Baby Knight... I would say he got off kind of lucky because that set, that first Widow Mine connected with a probe that was in the uh, Assimilator. So there could have been even more death and carnage there for Baby Knight. Well, I just want to go ahead and say that Baby Knight really is living up to his tweet, what he said earlier. He said he was nervous coming mm. into this series, and this is just the, the, the prime example. He's lost 11 workers when he really scouted this coming early on. Maybe didn't exactly know that it was going to be Hellions or Marines. Uh, Hellions or Widowmines, sorry. But still, he knew something was coming to his Mineral Alliance, and he didn't defend it. So not the best of starts for him now. He does have a Colossus production on the way, but he could have maybe looked for some kind of two-base timing, because he was trying to rush out plus one armor with Corona Boost, but after losing so much, there is... There is no timing to hit at all. Oh, and this observer just moves right out of position of where that medevac was just about to enter, whilst the units even move forward a little bit as well. So really unfortunate here for Baby Knight, as he does end up spotting that with this army. There's a small contingent of uh, forces, though, moving through the middle of the map as well. He has to be careful about where he positions his forces. Well, he's about to have a Colossus uh, finish here, so sh things should be a little bit easier. But unfortunately, there is no Mothership Core Energy left. He used one. Photon overcharge inside the main base, and has used another one as well just now. So he's going to have to be careful with his uh, with his play here, and with his defense. Crass so far, not playing too badly here against Baby Knight, as Baby Knight's trying to deal with the small poke at the top. Uh, still has to be careful about that medevac, trying to go in and once again near the main. 
And, well, Crass is just uh, gearing up for a little bit of a longer game here. Third command center morphing into orbital and uh, probably plant itself very quickly. It's Aklon Weiss, after all. Yeah, so far, so good here for Crass. He's opened up with a good attack with the with the Mines. His macro's been pretty on point behind it, too. Everything is looking good at the moment for Crass here. He's played out a good game to start. And whoop, has to leave a few men behind. Sorry, guys, you're going to get roasted up by that lovely little Colossus. And uh, Crass not able to find too much damage just yet in these later stages. And now moving into the mid game. Still killed 16 workers, though, from that initial assault. So 53 workers to 58 in favor of Crass. And uh, I'm curious to see if he's going to play this game out to, to the you know, full macro game. Yeah, uh, he, he looks like he's going to. Mm. He looks like it at the moment. Um, but... I'm looking in. I, yeah, I think he's going to. Yeah. Uh, the way that this series has gone so far for him it has leaned up quite nicely. He did lose a uh, medivac on the right hand side here, but if he wanted to go for a, a two or three base push with SCVs, then I really think that he would have started Viking production a little bit earlier. It's a little bit slow. He hasn't even got one out yet. I think he's he's still on just medivac, so not the highest count. Yeah, that's a really good point to make, actually. So there isn't really too much of an opportunity for him to do that kind of thing and just go straight absolute balls to the wall aggression but at the same time he's going to continue trying to drop um and actually just try and drop around that stalker which does blink out of the way there so good reactions by baby knight and uh, needs to keep there's a lot of these stalkers free though uh, loses one or two no yeah just one or two but he has taken a third base now as well out in the open uh, down to the right hand side as at this point I still feel good. Crass is just going to play with a couple of timings. Now, not all ins. He's just going to try and go for, Yeah. you know, once he gets to a high Viking count, he'll definitely start getting pressure on uh, once his upgrade's complete for them, uh, which is on the way now. And we should see him move out very, very soon. And then after that, we'll see the Ghost Academy come down and he'll start his uh, extra barracks and Ghost Academy production soon. And I have to, you know, commend Crass for a solid game so far. I don't think too many people expected him to be playing you know, super well against Baby Knight, but to be honest, he's leading this game against mm. Baby Knight, and Baby Knight really needs to get something working in his favor, whether it be deflecting an attack, whether it be hitting some glorious storms, something along those lines, because at the moment, Crest is going to move out in seconds time, because his upgrades are about to align, yep. and he does have a bit of a powerful attack that is going to deal a lot of damage to Baby Knight. Oh, he really does. This army is looking pretty good for Crass. Um, it's not exactly MMA macro, <laughs> but at the same time, it's it's been really on point. Crass is going to have a pretty strong army here, even repairing Medivacs, being very, very thorough about this move out. And as you said, those upgrades have aligned, and uh, Storm is not going to be anywhere near here for Baby Knight. So how is he going to deal with this? Well, he has to focus on stopping the Vikings with his Blink Stalkers and allowing the Colossus to do the, dam the damage they need. That's hmm. actually the way to stop this. Or, yeah. not, or not at least to die, because he could die to this. He if, could. If, if this you know, it doesn't go in his favor. He does have a high Colossus count. Five Colossus is high, but he must, 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 must focus his Stalkers on the Vikings. Whoop, trying to pick off that Archon that was not in position there with the army, but Baby Knight does pull his entire army forwards to try and save that, and he does. Just sending a small force over to that third. Does force out a Photon Overcharge, but it was a nice move initially to try and uh, provoke a response from Baby Knight. And he'll continue to do that, I suppose. He'll keep sending a couple of units down there. Yeah, drops the scan, sees his opponent's entire army's positioning, and he's going to head over to that third location as well. He may get caught in between a rock and a hard place, though. He may end up getting the Nexus, and that's great, but he only has four Vikings to... Uh, uh, sorry, he only has four Medivacs to try and evacuate out and gets the Nexus, but at the same time, he's losing quite a few of these Vikings, and that's a lot of Colossi that still actually reign supreme here across this. There's too many Colossi, Apollo. Uh... Uh-oh. All right, I'm just going to be brutally honest. GG. <laughs> That was not a good attack from Crass. I, I get it's cool to pick up the third, yeah. but in trade-off of everything. What would have happened in that game if he'd stayed in, which is why he quit, is very simply a counter-attack happens and he loses. Five Colossus still alive after losing all the Vikings. That was Crass probably letting his own nerves get to him. I'm in a good position. I'm in very, very solid position. Let me try and pick off this Nexus. Oh crap, I lost everything. And unfortunately for Crass, as good as that game was going, it finished off just as fast. Yeah, it really wow. did. That was uh, unexpected. Oops. We were ex we were expecting him to just poke and prod with just a few units, but that full committal and putting yourself in in that spot. If you have a load of medevacs, then great, run away and try and get out of there. But he only had four. His Viking production was trying to kill off the Colossi. And I can't help but feel sorry for him there. Yeah. That was such a such a bad move. It was a great start. Mistake. And then. 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what it was. Oops. All right, well, second map is going to be Belshire Vestige here between these guys. Baby Knight, I think he also realizes he kind of got a little bit lucky there uh, in the way Crass was trying to execute his plans. Mm. But now on Belshire Vestige, it's a map that both players feel extremely comfortable on. And if, if Crass keeps up the level of uh, play that he did there and Baby Knight slips, with not being able to deny those Widow Mines at the beginning. Yeah. Again, just a single cannon in that back mineral line, which we've seen Naniwa do in the past, we saw Todd do. It worked out really, really well. So I think that just getting that one cannon could have helped out worlds of difference. That's definitely a wake-up call for Baby Knight. Yeah. Like, he's been let loose from that, uh, from that noose there, because very simply, he could have lost that game if he... If if Crass had played that out as as good as he started it, and he was a different Terran player, for example, and he just transformed into MMA for the second half, it's going in his favor for, mm. for a lot of the times there. He got lucky and now needs to wake himself up and be like, all right, I almost lost game number one there. Let me hit game number two hard. Let me get to that winner's match. Because if he goes up against MMA with this kind of form, with slow reactions and just not playing his best, then MMA will kill him. MMA will kill him. He needs to step it up and use these games against Crass for, from, from Baby Knight's perspective as a warm up, as a, all right, this is, I'm going to yeah. kill this Terran player. I'm going to go into the wounds. I'm going to kill this other Terran player. That's how he should actually be thinking about this. Because if he doesn't and he goes into it like, oh, I'm so lucky I got through, oh, 2 1, <laughs> you know, or something like that, then MMA will say, all right, nerd, get out. This is, this is, I'm, I'm taking first place. Because MMA's games, if you translate that into words, it's like, I'm winning this group. That's how well MMA played game number one. Baby Knight so far is like, I'll settle for second place. You know, Ooh. it's not as dominant. He needs that dominant performance. He needs that confidence boost if he wants to go up against MMA. You're right. And now moving on to game number two, as we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner, the game was in his grasp, but now has to tie up the series one-to-one -one to try and keep his hopes alive here in this first round. Representing Germany and NRS, he is crass. And down to the bottom right-hand corner, our red Protoss with a lucky, lucky getaway there in game number one. Representing Millennium and Denmark, we have Baby Knight. Hmm. And I think um, also, I, I had to ask you, going back to game number one there, Baby Knight, I was very surprised to see him go up to, because by the time he had five Colossus there, uh, five Colossi there, he, he actually had a sixth coming along with the army. That's not something you see too often, that yep. many Colossi. What was, the, what was the reasoning behind that, Apollo? Well, the reasoning behind it here is a Terran player, once they gain an advantage, and you know people can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this is how it goes. <laughs> when a Terran player gains an advantage like they did, 11 probe kills, mm. anything that the Protoss tries to do is slowed down by quite a lot. You know, I'm talking yeah, a lot yeah. of, that's a lot. 11 pros being killed off, that's a lot because you have to spend chrono boosting to replenish them. That's a lot of downtime that your economy has while building back these 11 probes. And then on top of that, that's chrono boost that isn't going into something else. So what a lot of Terran players often do with gaining such an advantage is finish it off with an SCV pull. If Baby Knight had tried to play a normal game and gotten up to Templar, then he probably wouldn't have had the resources he needed to get there at a good time and to have enough units. So if Crass had decided to pull SCVs in that game, Baby Knight just stuck and said, all right, I'm going to rely on my Blink Stalkers to bring the Vikings down and my Colossus will win through. To be honest, there's been discussions recently how to deal with Innovation's playstyle mm -hmm. of how he pulls SCVs. And I, and I don't really think that consistent Colossus production is out of the world. It's not, it's not insane. Yeah. People think people sometimes do think it is, but I think with good blink and a lot of Colossus, five Colossus, because sometimes you can get to five Colossus like now. I think it's possible, and I think that's what he was probably aiming towards. The other option in terms of dealing with the innovations play, I I, I assume, is you know just rushing to storm pretty quickly, right, and trying to deal with them like that. But at the same time, that can have its own vulnerabilities itself, I believe. Mm. Yeah, I mean every every strategy from both sides, ins and outs, yeah. strengths and weaknesses, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it wouldn't be a strategy game without that, would it really, Mr. Apollo? <laughs> it would be a pretty boring one. That is right, Kolaris. That would be, uh, be a bit boring, but we do have StarCraft, which is one of the best games in the world. Uh, if not the best game, I'm sorry, Kolaris. If not, if not the best game. I must For me, admit, it's I'm the best game. Nerd. 
It's it's a pretty good one. Got to agree. Got a new style coming in from Grass. He instead of the factories decided for a second barracks, and oh. he also is building a, a second and third Reaper. If Baby Knight was to move across the map like just now with the Stalkers, the Reapers kill. Mm -hmm. Crass obviously doesn't want to lose the Reaper like he did in game number one, and we are seeing a chrono boosted second Stalker. So we, we need to... Uh, oh no, in the middle, he loses his Reaper again. Oh dear. A little bit sloppy, and now all of a sudden these two Reapers aren't that scary, and the second Stalker that was chrono boosted out to put a bit of pressure on, and there isn't a bunker, actually start to do a lot more damage than they were meant to. Three yeah. Reapers, do some damage in the middle, catch the Stalker, take its shields, maybe a bit of hit points, come back, do the same again. And now I think that we could see quite a bit of damage being dealt to Crass, unfortunately. Yeah. And the, the Reapers are on the other side. And the shoe is on the other foot, my friend. Uh, he kills an SCV. That's uh, pretty nice itself. Never mind uh, the second Stalker just about to rendezvous Not at the good front. at all here. Time warp's going to be annoying. To be honest, if I was... Uh, Baby Knight in this position, I'd be like, hold on a minute, I could probably just, if I slow him down long enough, I could do a lot. Mm. But he is taking a lot of damage from these Reapers that decided not to come back, which has to push Baby Knight forward. He can't just sit on the natural doing yeah. damage, he needs to do more damage because the Reapers aren't helping. And two Stalkers is a great number as well to try and deal with SCVs and Marines. Not necessarily a Marauder, but actually really good focus fire as well as movement there by Baby Knight. Will kill that off before his Stalker even took much actual damage, never mind the shield. So very good control there by Baby Knight. But Crass is not being able to multitask very strong right now. He's killing a pylon. He took the shields off a pylon instead of getting into the no. problem while defending. At the same time as well, we on the other side of the map, a fast-paced game is SCV's got a surround on a Stalker as well. Nicely done, nicely done there at Reapers. Oh, one of them will end up going down there uh, to a probe as well as Stalker, and Crass pushes away the aggression from his side of things. Uh, he did get seven worker kills, though, yeah, in the end against three. To be honest, I'd say that was kind of equal, because Crass... Oh, Baby Knight's making a mistake as well. His probe's just sat there doing nothing, waypointed wrong. Uh, mistakes coming from both sides, but it is kind of equal in the way that it's shaped out. Simply because is there was a lot of Ooh. loss of mining time on the natural there from Crass, even though he killed more SCVs. Oh, this Mothership core though, is going to end up going down. Yeah. I got stuck between a rock and a hard place. Don't know how you can do that when you're flying, but apparently that Mothership core did. Yeah, just both players here really, I think, are nervous. I mean, we saw Crass play a bit of a shaky game in the previous game and now Baby Knight. And now with losing the Mothership core, he doesn't have any photon overcharge to mm. push back the usual Marine pressure out. So this set of Marines in the middle it's like 11 of them. If they go over the other side, <laughs> there isn't anything at this point. And theorizing from that, I guess that if you don't have the Mothership Core, then you try, have to try and maybe make some extra sentries to compensate, but then takes away gas from your you know, actual teching route. But he's actually got his tech qu uh, flourishing quite nicely mm -hmm. here as Baby Knight. Crass is using the new innovation build um, that we saw come out this weekend, just mm. double barracks to Fast Factory and Starport. It's kind of nice. I, I do like this, actually. Uh, and then you get down the, the extra two barracks here, and then you do go over to the third command set quite fast. The extra, um, I mean, the, the faster um, starport here means that you are better against some all-ins because you had medivacs out a little yeah. bit faster in this game. You also can harass and pressure a little bit earlier on. And you also, if you think about it, start Viking production earlier too because you rush out the, four, the first four medivacs. Overall, I think this will start to become a little bit more of the norm. I, I actually think so as well. I, it works really nicely. I think it's a lot more versatile than uh, the rigid standard that we see of three barracks or maybe just one barracks into factory into uh, starport. But now Crass is moving out to the middle of the map. It's funny because he actually doesn't really know too much about what his opponent's up to. He threw a missile tur turret down at the front, which, yes, can help, but against what his opponent's doing, it's not going to be any use whatsoever. Yeah, not too too much waste of a resource, though. I mean, it, I guess it technically also stops the Observer being around there as well, so... It's okay from Crass to do that, I think, in this position. But if he's able to deal damage with this drop, even though I think it's very unlikely, with one Colossus already out and a second one about to join it, he shouldn't be able to deal any damage here. But if he did, of course. It'd be good. It's amazing. You'd be happy, happy. That's not going to happen. Mm, don't think so. <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Uh, Baby Knight's on lockdown right now. I saw the Marine at the front scouting out what was going on. That might be the prelude to some kind of assault here on either side. And wow, Crass actually taking his uh, third base uh, on the left-hand side for a bit more of an aggressive stance. Yeah, more of an aggressive push forward here. 
Um, but we, we need to see damage dealt. Like, if he can waypoint Ooh. his units to the middle... Whoa, 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 where are you going, Medivax? Uh, you actually want to drop in the main because Baby Knight is way out of position right now. Uh, and indeed he is going to. Photon Overcharge will go down and deny this for a little bit, but he's going to lose quite a few probes. Yeah, nice sell warp in there to stop the Marines and Marauders getting too many probes. And one Medivac has picked off here, so that oh. means not everything's going to die. And then, well, there was only three probes for that, so I, I'm not yeah. even sure if that was completely worth it. A Medivac and a couple of units, so like two Marauders and a couple of Marines for three probes, probably not worth it there. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the resources lost. And, uh, well, Crass has lost a little bit more in that regard. Of course, technically getting more probes does help out uh, in the grand scheme of economy against actual losses. But still, Baby Knight with his army pushing out into the middle of the map. These two Colossi, they're not really contested by anything. There's only two Vikings on the way right now. Yep. That's uh, not obviously the best thing here for his opponent, and this third base will have to be lifted up. And that's one of the, the weaknesses of putting it out in the open like this. Yeah, that's a tough spot to be in here for Crass. He's been caught with his pants down. Uh, well, Baby Knight has a little bit as well. He's going to lose a few probes in the main, loses four very quickly. Crass has to evacuate on out, but at the same time, uh, his uh, command center is taking a little bit of damage, but it should be fine. Yeah, it's going to escape here, but he's not mining, which is kind of yeah. big. Uh, and from this position out, I mean... Uh, Baby Knight's not in too bad shape at all. He's actually just added on a forge and a twilight cast, but isn't doing anything with it yet. And he's built a pile on aggressively on the other side. Do you think that he could have moved forwards with two Colossi and actually done a bit of damage to his opponent if he knew the Viking count? Yeah, of course. Uh, this is uh... It's not like he, he didn't really know. He's yeah. actually now just getting the first bit of scout on his opponent's army. Sees a couple of STVs with it, which is really weird, and mules. Like, it's even weirder. Ooh. I'm not even sure what's going on there. Yeah. Did he evacuate? Did he Was he mining from the third all and he just evacuated from there? He's pulling all his SCVs. He's think oh, he geez. thinks it's an all-in. Because he sees there's no third base. Okay, that makes more sense why he's got it with him, but it's it's com it's not that. It's just a slower third base. Yeah. There's double forges down, so... and Oh, God. This and is just... This is a disaster. He's been trapped up there as well, and the Vikings... I'm sure Baby Knight's uh, like, huh? Like, what? What Did is going just... on? Because he didn't need to evacuate that at all. If he just had a couple bunks down, I guess he's scared about there being two Colossus. Baby Knight's got a lot of probes. He's a little bit supply blocked. Like I said, both players are making mistakes. Both of them, a lot of them actually, throughout this series. It's not one of the best series we've seen. But overall, Baby Knight's got double upgrades now coming in and Blink. And we'll take a third now. And Crass is like, what? <laughs> what I've lost my natural on? and now I'm... Are these what SCVs coming along with this army as well? Well, there's only a few of them, admittedly, but still, they are apparently coming along for the ride. Baby Knight, yes, is supply blocked, as uh, he did get forced into that position from Crass just then once again. But still, his army's looking pretty good. There's still only six Vikings out, plus one is not finished for them. How many Stalkers do we have? Mm, Fourteen. So if he gets the blinks right, he could do some damage to his opponent. Pretty, Crass is pretty just rapidly. miles behind. It's, it's that yeah. simple. After losing that, this this just... Baby Knight's like, well, I guess I'm, I'm leaving this game. What? And he is, like, very easily. With Blink done too, these Vikings aren't high enough. Uh, as long as he targets them down, these Colossus will probably survive as well. Maybe lose one, but the upgrades are coming in now. Plus two <laughs> attack and plus two armor. So Baby Knight's at 2-2 two, two versus an opponent's is 2-1. This is such an odd situation. This in is this a very game. weird game. It's, it's yeah. let's not lie. Baby Knight's not even mining from his main gas properly. He's only got one out of three, which is hurting his gas income as he's quite low in gas. Hence a lot of zealots. Mm, it's going to force the cancellation on the third. Not too bad there by Crass, really being an uh, opportunist and getting that. So that's quite nice for him. He realized where his opponent's army was positioned. But again, once he, he sees that army, he, he knows what he's going to be playing against. Baby Knight, that army is so formidable. Yeah, and now with Zealot Charge about to be finished as well. Um, he probably wins this, the straight fight. Mm. Zealot's charging forward. Blink, Stalker's jumping to the right-hand side, picking off Vikings and then four Colossus. Fifth one about to be made as well. Templar Arcades is down, and unfortunately there's not the, the highest amount of gas here from Baby Knight, who still has that problem inside his main base with only one of the assimilators really properly mining. Uh, we on about Baby Knight, sorry? Yeah. yeah. He's uh, yeah. One, one out of three. He's now getting in there with all three, so that's better for him. I realize that he's throwing down pylons there. Once again, the third has been spotted by Crass, but if he goes for the engagement to try and deny it, I don't think it happens. Baby Knight here with these last two pylons finishing up is going to be able to max out. And um, with 3-3 three, three on the way as well, Crass needs so much more. He needs more Vikings. He needs ghosts. He needs... Because the High Templars are going to be on the way pretty soon. Or, or the Archons, at least. That's right. That's right. But, uh, I mean, even without them, Baby Knight has a very, very yeah. strong army here. Like, very, very... Like, look at the supply counts. The army supply is 140 to 110. It's just 
Too much stuff here for Baby Knight. Whoa, and he, so many he can probably win the game right now. Blinks forwards aggressively here into the Marauders and Marines. Never mind the Vikings, whilst the Zealots actually flood on forwards. Admittedly, they are being a little bit funneled here. The Bio's killing them off pretty quickly. Uh, but the Colossi are still going to be there. There's only three Vikings left. He has nothing to deal with these Colossi. And then the third base has been forced to lift up. This Bio is in a terrible predicament. GG. Wow, Baby Knight. What an odd game number two. Baby Knight moves on to the winner's match uh, at the end of that and will place, face off against MMA. Though with Baby Knight's form in that game, it's, it's not an MMA standard, so it's going to be hard against going up against MMA. Yeah. Absolutely, it's going to be difficult. MMA looked great, and I'm sure that he's going to bring the same performances earlier on and from this weekend into the next game. I certainly think so as well. MMA looked very, very strong uh, in his past tournaments as of late. Um, Baby Knight, if he brings that performance here, it's going to be tough. So he's going to have to step up his game. Uh, but you know what's weird, though, is that after playing a play, after playing Crass uh, and trying to get that going, I think he'll feel a bit more composed, a little bit more relaxed, even though it let's is hope MMA. So. Uh, let's hope so. He, he needs to. All right, guys, so after the break, we shall find out who first moves on to the round of 16. Will it be Acer MMA or will it be Millennium's Baby Night? Get pure precision with a true 8,200 DPI Pro Aim laser sensor. Get pure speed with a 32 bit Turbo Core V2 processor. Get pure command power with the Easy Shift Button Duplicator. Get pure atmosphere with a 16.8 million color lighting system. Rocket Cone.